Hello, dear students. Uh, we are very happy uh, to work with you on our department. Mm, our department uh, of uh, pediatric therapeutic dentistry. And today uh, we have lecture number one about uh, historical stages in the development of pediatric dentistry. Let's start. Today we will speak about the. I'm sorry. Uh, today we will speak about the main problems and uh, section of dentistry, and uh, the role of uh, domestic scientists uh, in the development of the uh, discipline. Let's start. Um, so, dentistry. It is a branch of medicine uh, dealing with the study of teeth, uh, their structure and uh, functioning uh, diseases and methods of prevention and treatment. Uh, so, pediatric dentistry, it is a practice and a teaching of a comprehensive a preventive uh, therapeutic oral health care of a child from birth through adolescence. Uh, it is, uh, con uh, it is um, contrasted uh, to include care for special uh, patients who uh, demonstrate uh, mental, uh, phys physical and uh, or some emotional problems. Uh, we know from American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry um, from 1985 uh, about uh, the um, pediatric dentistry as uh, known uh, as uh, pedodontics um, and um, as dentistry for adolescents and children in the area of dentistry uh, concerned with uh, preventive and therapeutic oral health care for children from birth through adolescence. Uh, as I um, said you on our previous uh, slide. Uh, it also includes uh, special care for uh, special pa uh, patients uh, beyond uh, the age of uh, adolescence who demonstrated um, different uh, problems. Mm. Pedodontics is a branch of uh, dentistry that includes having a child except dentistry, prevention, uh, detection, restoration of primary and um, permanent dentition, applying preventive measures uh, for periodontal therapy, and uh, dental carrier's uh, prevalence, uh, intercepting uh, and uh, correcting uh, varieties areas of uh, malocclusion. I'm sorry. Mm, so for pediatric dentists, uh, general medical knowledge is uh, especially important uh, since it is the dentist who is the first to see systemic disease. So, for example, different disorders of uh, bone uh, metabolism, uh, some blood diseases or uh, kidney pathology, endocrine and other pathologies. So the basics uh, prevention of uh, dental disease diseases and uh, related uh, somatic pathology should be established by a pediatric dentist even before the birth of a child and uh, starting from the first months of his life. Uh, so, um, Pediatric dentistry in an age-defined uh, uh, specialty that provides uh, both primary and uh, comprehensive uh, and um, uh, preventive uh, uh, or some treatment, uh, therapeutic oral health care for infants and uh, children through adolescence uh, and including uh, those with special health care that they need. 
and aims of uh, pedodontics uh, first of all um, we need to determine what is the best for the child and the, uh, at uh, that moment and uh, the second uh, one uh, what is the best uh, for adult into uh, who into whom the child uh, will eventually grow and children's uh, pediatric dentistry studies uh, the provincial clinical picture and methods of uh, treatment of diseases that we uh, have in the oral cavity. Uh, some diseases of oral mucosa uh, membrane and uh, take into account the age characteristics of the child and the influence of these diseases of, on the growing uh, body as well. And some section uh, you can see uh, here, first section, it is uh, prevention uh, dental diseases. The second, uh, ch uh, child's uh, surgical dentistry. The third, orthodontics treatment. And uh, the fourth, it is uh, child uh, therapeutic dentistry or pediatric dentistry. And objectives. Uh, first, uh, as a pedodontist, uh, the overall health of the child should be a primary uh, concern. So it is. Um, it means that oral health uh, in the integral part of the total development. The second is prevention, of course. Um, the third, uh, uh, comprehensive oral health uh, care. The first, uh, it is development, uh, developing uh, dentitions in a growing child's needs uh, to be um, monitored uh, by, pedodont by pedodontists um, constantly from the beginning. Fifth, uh, needs to update his knowledge uh, to deliver quality dental work. Uh, next one, pedodontists, uh, it's a well-trained uh, uh, psychologist, uh, so uh, elevate uh, fear and action uh, um, and anxiety and modify the child behavior to develop a, po a positive attitude and behavior towards oral health. The next one, uh, parenteral uh, guard, uh, guardians and um, regarding different uh, uh, or preventive some or some preventive dentistry and treatment modalities. So, and uh, what about history? Mm, we know that history dentistry does back to the depths uh, of the centuries because even in the skulls of the um, different uh, periods yeah from the uh, from the early paleo paleolithic area and um, we know that the problem of to the age uh, accompanied the person almost uh, from the very beginning of the history so um, in, so, in our slides you can see some pictures um, and these pictures uh, demonstrated uh, the different um, um, models of uh, treatment uh, at uh, that time. And uh, it is uh, believed uh, that uh, for the first time people who began to treat uh, teeth appeared about 9,000, 8,000 years ago in um, 2001. So, um, you can see some pictures. It is uh, this picture demonstrates Egyptian uh, priests uh, and uh, dentists were the first to learn how to put uh, dental fillings and how to make uh, artif uh, artificial teeth. So what they do, they uh, were t uh, tied with a special wire to them, uh, adjacent healthy teeth and uh, from the history we know about this. And this uh, Edwin's uh, papyrus uh, 
and the first document of uh, dentistry that have uh, come down to us date back to 90.00 BC the it means means and uh, the, here we um, can see describing the doctor's tactics uh, for, for uh, dislocation of the joint. And uh, we know that, uh, getting, uh, that uh, getting children to grow their teeth uh, may seem like a new problem for parents in the last century. But the trust, but the true it uh, that uh, dental history started as early as 5000 BC. And before that, it's even more ancient times in uh, 2600 BC. And Egyptian tablets were found um, depicting their first dental doctors. Look please to the pictures. And a uh, Sumerian text dating uh, back to uh, 5000 BC and describe uh, some two swarms uh, at the course of uh, dental decay. And as early as uh, 2600 BC, uh, the death of here is recorded and uh, so here uh, was an Egyptian scribe yeah, and often considered uh, the first dentist. An inscription uh, on his tomb includes um, the title uh, The greatest uh, of uh, those who deal with teeth and of uh, physicians. Mm, so this is the earliest known reference to a person uh, identified uh, as a dental uh, practitioner. And nearly a, a millennium later, an Egyptian text called them Ebers papyrus, so uh, refers to diseases uh, of the teeth and various tooth age remedies. And uh, even uh, Hippocrates and Aristotle wrote about dentistry in about uh, 500 BC, um, including the eruption of teeth, treating decayed, uh, decayed um, teeth and gum diseases, um, extracting teeth with uh, forceps and using a uh, virus um, to stabilize those uh, teeth and fractured jaws. Celsus, a Roman medical writer, writes uh, extensively in his important uh, compendium of medicine on oral hygiene and stabilization of loose teeth and treatment for toothache, teasing uh, pain and jaw fracture. This all leads up uh, to about uh, 2100 AD when the at uh, Etruscans uh, practice uh, dental uh, prothetics uh, using gold crowns and fixed uh, bridge work. And um, about Hippocrates, yeah, so um, the first interesting data of teasing are reflected uh, in the writings of Hippocrates. And in the chapter of famous books of aphorisms, Hippocrates writes, uh, during the period of teasing, there is itching in the gums fewer. He also connects um, all dental diseases with the accumulation of uh, bad uh, juices uh, in the body. And uh, this hypothesis lasted um, almost until the end of the um, 18th century and was called the humoral theory in scientific works.
Uh, the dental universe uh, began to develop a true profession uh, during the Middle Ages and uh, the first mark of this time is in 700 uh, when a medical text in China mentions uh, the use of uh, silver paste, which is a type of amalgam. In, uh, in 1210, a um, guild of barbers is established in France and uh, barbers eventually uh, evolve uh, into two uh, distinct uh, group uh, first group um, it were surgeons who were educated and trained um, to perform complex uh, service operations and lay barbers or barber surgeons who performed more routine uh, hygienic services uh, including uh, showing bleeding and tooth extraction in 1400, a series of royal uh, decrees in France prohibit lay barbers uh, from uh, practicing all surgical procedures except uh, bleeding, uh, cupping and leaching and extracting teeth. It is, uh, the it is a picture about the doctors of ancient uh, Japan removed teeth with their um, bare hands and having previously uh, loosened um, them with a wooden uh, chisel and hammer. Um, and you need to know about the little um, additional book um, for all uh, kinds of diseases and uh, infirmities uh, of the teeth uh, by uh, Bochlein. Uh, the first books uh, devoted um, a entirely to dentistry is published in Germany, uh, written for barbers and surgeons who treat the mouth. It covers uh, practical topics uh, such as oral hygiene, tooth extraction, drilling teeth uh, and placement of gold fillings. In France, um, Ambrose Pear, known as the, in the, as the father of surgery, uh, published his complete works in uh, 1575. This included uh, practical information about dentistry, such as uh, tooth extraction and the treatment of tooth decay and, uh, to, uh, and uh, different uh, jaw fractures. Uh, it is uh, Middle Ages and uh, the medical uh, treatises uh, of uh, antiquity were uh, somehow forgotten and uh, with them rise methods of dental treatment were forgotten. And it is uh, Guidon de Cholica. Cholic uh, wrote one of the first textbooks of uh, surgery Glenn. Avicenna and Hippocrates. Very interesting picture. It is Apollonia. And every century in the Middle Ages, uh, there was a real scientific uh, research in the field of treatment and prosthetics. Uh, and so the famous French surgeon, yeah, Fanchardin, uh, the book um, Dental Surgery or, uh, or Treatise of t on Teeth, published in 1728 and describe it in uh, detail various methods of treatment and prosthetics of, of teeth. Uh, in the um, during uh, the year 1723, Pierre Fauchard, a French surgeon, yeah, uh, published this book and um, this, uh, 
and uh, here is cre uh, credited, credited uh, as being the father of modern dentistry because uh, his book um, was the first uh, to describe a um, um, comprehensive system of the practice of dentist, dentistry and including uh, basic uh, oral anatomy and function, uh, operative and restorative techniques and denture um construction in uh, 1746 uh, uh, claude moton describes a gold crowns and post to be retained in the root canal he also uh, recommends uh, right, uh, white um, enameling for um, gold crowns for more aesthetics appearance and um, John Baker, who is uh, considered uh, the earliest medically trained dentist uh, to practice in America, immigrates in, 70, in 70, 1760 from England and sets up practice. Um, shortly following that, Isaac Greenwood practice, uh, practices the first native-born American dentist. Once uh, 1770 uh, rolls around the Paul River, uh, places um, advertisements in the Boston newspaper offering his service as a dentist. And uh, George Washington owned personal dentist um, John Greenwood. Mm, and uh, 17, in 1790 was the first to make a dental drill. He was the first to make a drill which were which was uh, powered by by a foot. It is the first chair, yeah. And um, look, please, on this picture. Um, so, um, John Greenwood uh, adapts uh, his uh, mother's foot treated uh, spinning wheel to rotate a drill. Uh, similarly, uh, a um, mm, prominent American dentist named uh, Joseph Flagg constructs uh, the first chair made uh, specially for dental patients. Uh, to a wooden uh, Windsor chair, flag attached an um, adjustable uh, headdress uh, plus an arm extension uh, to hold instruments. Uh, Rush got um, um, acquainted uh, with dentistry thanks to Peter first who uh, for the first time bought various devices for dental treatment from abroad and the first school uh, that trained uh, that uh, trained um, dentists opened in um, 1881 in St. Uh, Petersburg and by 1883 80, 80, more than uh, 450 dentists has gra uh, graduated from this school. And uh, there were also per persons in Russia who considered their main uh, occupation dentistry. Uh, he introduced the uh, title to dentists in, uh, in 1710 and according to the position, uh, the one who decided to practice dentistry had to pass the tests before the medical college. In 1810, the rules of examination was published, were published um, for medical officials uh, who uh, claimed uh, the title of uh, dental doctor. Uh, 
and to obtain permission to practice independently, it was necessary to pass an exam in the medical surgical academy or university. And uh, since um, 1938, uh, this specialist, according uh, to the law, um, were called dentists. However, the requirements for them were well low. They might not have uh, not uh, only a general education uh, qualification, and uh, but also not know the basic of uh, literature. In uh, 1829, the books of the head physicians sample was published, Dentistry of the Art of uh, Dental Treatment of dental diseases uh, with the application of uh, children hygiene. In it, uh, the author said uh, how children should be kept from birth in order to maintain their health and protect teeth from damage. Proposed a classification of occlusion animals uh, with an indication of their etiology, et etiology and treatment. However, he notes uh, that dentistry uh, occupies uh, an important uh, place and is closely uh, related uh, to other medical specialists and is uh, based on the name laws. And the first school was opened uh, by James uh, Levi in Warsaw in uh, 1891. Uh, at the same time, a dental school was opened in Odessa by um, Tychinski. So, Uh, one of the first doctors who understood the importance of pediatric dentistry was uh, Embodik Maximovich, uh, the founder of uh, not only Russian obstetrics uh, but uh, also pediatri pediatrics. Uh, in his works, much uh, attention is paid to diseases, including uh, dental diseases, in uh, young children. In the works uh, at Winding or uh, Science About Case, the also uh, touches upon the issue of pediatric dentistry and uh, describes uh, diseases of the teeth and oral cavity, gives a lot of advice of oral hygiene. Fast forward of the last century and um, we can really see how dentist, uh, dentistry has led us uh, to some great inventions. In 1960, for example, sit-down and uh, four-handed dentistry becomes popular in the USA. And this technique improves uh, productively, productivity and uh, shortness uh, treatment time. Uh, at uh, the same time, uh, lasers are developed uh, and approved uh, the soft tissue work, uh, such as treatment of periodontal diseases. Along with that, the first uh, commercial electric toothbrush developed in uh, Switzerland after World War II uh, is introduced in the United, un in the United States. Um, a colorless um, this model followed in 1961. In 1990, two scholarly retractive materials uh, plus increased um, uh, as age of bleaching, veneers, uh, implants. Um, it is era of aesthetic dentistry. As recently as 1998, the National Institute of Dental Research is uh, renamed uh, the National Institute of Dental and Craniofacial Research uh, to more uh, accurate, uh, accurately uh, reflects their broad research base that it has some to support. 
And uh, what about the role of domestic science in the development of uh, dentistry? Of course, um, during these years, uh, Pyrgolf uh, performed plastic surgery on the face uh, in children. Mm, so uh, they uh, include uh, uh, the, some plastics operative manipulations and um, uh, they uh, mm, substantiated uh, the amputation method for treating deciduous uh, teeth with uh, pulpitis while uh, proving um, that the uh, physiological resorption of the roots is not uh, disturbed. Uh, next one. The role of domestic scientists also uh, the true founder of pediatric dentistry in Russia, it is Lindbergh. In uh, 90, uh, in 80, sorry, uh, 86, uh, he organized the first free dental outpatient clinic in Russia and introduced systemic examination of the oral cavity and dental treatment for children, which were carried out once a year. All changes uh, in uh, the dentition were reco uh, recorded uh, in sanitation maps by uh, which it was possible to trace the dynamics and the state of the oral uh, cavity organs and the course of dental treatment. Uh, based on the five years of experience in regular oral cavity sanitation, Lindbergh stated a significant decrease um, in the number of extracted teeth. He also understood the importance of development preventive uh, measures. And speaking now uh, at a meeting of the Russian Society of Public Health of, uh, on uh, March uh, in um, 1889 with a report uh, on the teeth of students and the organization for dental care in schools, Lindbergh pointed out the activity of dentists is limited to filling, uh, pulling out patient and uh, inserting um, artificial uh, artificial teeth. Prevention and diet are not applied of the oral cavity. This is a forgotten department. He will uh, remain forgotten until the keen the, the finds a scientific um, cultivators for himself. Okay, read uh, please about Lindbergh uh, that it uh, defended his uh, thesis uh, about the modern prevention and uh, therapy of dental caries for the degree of Doctor of Medical Sciences. In need, the author developed a clinical classification of caries diseases and um, he systematized, uh, systematized uh, the diagnosis and treatment principles. So Lindbergh was the first uh, professor professor in of dentistry. And um, he was uh, elected an honorary member of the Odessa. And uh, uh, later three more um, organized by the Society for the Protection of Public Health in 1903. And later, three more school outpatient clinics were opened uh, also on the um, charitable basis. And uh, personal training, yeah, of course. You should know about it. The October Revolution in 1917 uh, uh, brought um, about changes in the entire organization of uh, rendering assistance uh, uh, to the child population. On uh, July 11, uh, 1918, um, the, de the um, decree of the Council sorry, of People Com Commissariats of the 
R C F C S R on the establishment of the People Commissariat of Healthcare was signed. Uh, it was headed by a member of the All Russian Central uh, Executive, uh, Semashko, and uh, so the first stone was laid in the foundation of a unified medicine, and for the first uh, time, dentistry was included. Included uh, in it uh, as its um, organic integral link. The role of uh, domestic, we um, you should know about Douch um, was the initiator and um, conductor of the idea of oral cavity sanitation among the uh, population of the country. And um, uh, he uh, viewed uh, caries uh, as a diseases and uh, not as a chemical or uh, phys physical or chemical process of um, local origin. The also considered uh, their predisposition of the carriers to the carriers to be the result of two factors. Mm, to the first groups he attributed uh, them uh, conditions uh, for the formation of enamel and other tissues of the tooth. Uh, the second group uh, he in his opinion uh, is in the environment surrounding to the tooth which uh, which is subject to changes in uh, connection with the state or the whole organism. Uh, pointed uh, out the um, need to uh, radically uh, revise the work of dental institutions, uh, replacing the r randomly individual method uh, of uh, combining carriers with a method of uh, systemic uh, prevention, uh, which is reduced to a number of hygienic and dietary measures from early childhood, uh, on the one hand, and uh, on the uh, suppression of the caries process at the beginning uh, of its occurrence with others. And uh, to solve scientific uh, and methodological issues uh, revealed, uh, relate, uh, sorry, related um, to the organization of dental care, leading uh, scientists, doctors, amount from the Yevdekimova, Gofun, Klukomsky, Kavarsky, Furman, the name of doctors are uh, for forever inscribed uh, in the history of dentistry, Petrova, Gorelova, uh, Shapiro, uh, Zaborova, uh, Albanian, um, Bashkirova, uh, who were the first to e implement on an on idea of uh, pediatric therapeutic dentistry. On April 1st, uh, 1928, uh, 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 the Ukrainian State uh, Scientific Research Institute of Dentistry was officially opened in Odessa which uh, for many years was the only scientific research institute for the dental profile in the uh, USSR uh, um, and um, um, the main tasks of the institute uh, were to study the causes of diseases of the oral cavity organs to develop means and methods of their treatments and prevention, as well as organization and methodological work throughout the Republic. For many years, the Department of Pediatric Dentistry was the only center of pediatric dentistry in Ukraine. And uh, the department staff uh, under the uh, leadership of the profession uh, of the professor Sinitsyn uh, proposed new clinical and organization principles for plant of uh, dental uh, rehabilitation 
of the child population and uh, developed a number of original methods of treatment and prevention of dental caries, uh, periodontal tissue diseases, uh, dental velar animalis, and deformities. As present, the Department of the Institute uh, has organized their operates a center of pediatric dentistry and orthodontics in Odessa and the regions. Uh, the per period uh, before the Great uh, Patri sorry, Great uh, Patriotic War is characterized mainly uh, by the expansion uh, of the of the plant uh, rehabilitation oral cavity among the child population and uh, professor nikolai agapov made a great uh, contribution of this process uh, he scientifically uh, substantiated uh, and introduced into practice the most complete and effective system of plant oral uh, rehabilitation in children. Uh, based on the analysis of the large clinical materials, a gap of is uh, contrast um, uh, Kantarovis uh, shows showed uh, and uh, proved the need of for treatment of all forms of diseases and both temporary and permanent is in children at uh, different age periods. Simashka pointed out uh, the task um, of health improvement in the field of dentistry it should start from childhood, a healthy child's oral cavity in a, a procuse site for health in a, this area of the adult population. In the period from the 1962 and 1975, all onion uh, um, on Union Dental Congresses were regularly held and uh, which at uh, which various issues related or to pediatric dentistry were uh, discussed. In the decisions uh, of the seven All Union Congress of Dentists, it was noted as mean healthy. And the USSR to introduce a dentist pediatrician into the nomenclature of medical specialists, specialties. Uh, the uh, characteristics of the child's body require a complete rejection of the um, schematic uh, transfer on the accumulated experience of treating adults for the child. And since 1963, the Department of Pediatric Dentistry has been organized. The first uh, ones opened in Moscow and uh, then in Poltava, Lvov, Minsk, Minsk Institutes. Now in Ukraine, the Department of Pediatric Dentistry has been organized and uh, functional. Uh, Kiev, Dnepropetrovsk, Poltava, Kharkov, Odessa, Lvov, Uzhgorod, Donetsk, Vinnytsia, Ivano-Frankovsk are the scientific uh, direction to the departments in the study of the uh, peculiarities of the pathogenesis and the clinical picture of the main dental diseases in children and adolescents um, against the background of uh, general somatic pathology taking into account medical geographic, uh, geographical and uh, socio-economic factors, uh, development of pre preventive and therapeutic com complexes and originally um, oriented uh, effective programs for the prevention of dental caries and periodontal tissue diseases. Um, and here you can see uh, different uh, um, medical universities. First, it is National Medical University named after Bakamolitz. Second one, uh, and head of department in this university, Professor Savichuk Alexander Vasilievich. Odessa National Medi Medical University. You can see now LV National Medical University. 
highest state education institution of the city of Poltava, Ukrainian Medical Stomatological Academy. Kaiskova Lyudmila Fedorovna. Uh, and uh, head of the department uh, in our university, it is Yakubova Inessa Igorevna. Uh, from uh, 2012 uh, to the present, it is head of the department, is a doctor of medical sciences and a professor. And uh, now the department of uh, our um, of our department employs five uh, associate professors and ten assistants. It is our department. And uh, our department uh, provides uh, teaching of the following disciplines. It is uh, propedeptics of pediatric therapeutic dentistry, four and uh, um, second year students, and then prevention of dental diseases for third year students, pediatric therapeutic dentistry for four or five year students, for faculty of dentistry, and uh, postgraduate training in. Um, conducted in the following disciplines uh, pediatric therapeutic dentistry for first year e interns and uh, prevention of dental diseases for second year interns uh, it is uh, our um, facebook uh, you can uh, search our department we have uh, many interesting posts uh, there and um, your um, our mail and Viber, I think you have. If you don't have, you can um, you can write us in Facebook or Instagram page. Uh, we also have uh, many interesting posts. So we have uh, some. Uh, um, we have some interesting meetings. Okay. And our necessarily, guys. Uh, it is our page in YouTube. Uh, there you can search uh, uh, videos and lectures, uh, so please, you can see. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I think that uh, our first lecture um, were interesting for you and uh, you need to uh, understand that uh, these historical aspects were necessary for your uh, practice because now of course we work with a modern in a modern uh, dentistry um, dentistry um, hospitals uh, clinics yeah and we have uh, very good uh, equipment uh, we have a, a high level of the treatment in dentistry because we have uh, a modern and uh, very um, quality uh, materials uh, we have um, a modern uh, technology uh, for our work we have uh, we have microscopes, we have new instruments. Uh, so, if you have some question or uh, some information for you, uh, maybe you need uh, more information, you can write uh, in uh, after this uh, video and we can speak with you. Um, so, have a nice day and uh, I hope uh, we meet uh, with you on your practical lessons. Uh, so uh, have a nice day and uh, thank you for your attention. Goodbye. As you may already know, I have a fairly substantial fear of the dentist 
or literally more to the point, needles. I am more than happy to concede that this is an entirely irrational fear. Perhaps I need a new perspective. Perhaps looking back to the past will afford me a new appreciation of just how lucky I am. Around 300,000 years ago, the species Homo rhodesiensis showed signs of extreme wear on their teeth. Their tough diet and near-chronic abscesses were just one step on the long road of dental evolution to modern human beings. But it would be a few hundred thousand years until dentists showed up. Around 7000 BC, with the Indus Valley Civilization, we begin to see some of the first evidence for early dentists plying their trade. This comes in the form of holes drilled into teeth, presumably to remove decay. This drilling technology most likely came in the form of the bow drill, a fairly crude mechanical implement, but nonetheless effective. It is thought that bead making was the primary profession of these early dentists, who probably did house calls on the side. Though effective, this was likely far from a pleasant experience. Around 5000 BC, in southern Mesopotamia, Sumerians wrote down a key concept with regards to teeth. There is a text which describes the cause of dental pain and decay. They believed that such things occurred because of the tooth worm. The tooth worm was taken very seriously around 700 BC in the Assyrian city of Nineveh. A scribe, possibly suffering from toothache, took down an invocation against the tooth worm. It deplores the worm's nature and begs the gods to strike it down. The concept of the tooth worm was widely accepted up until the early 18th century. Practitioners would even yank at nerves thinking them worms until the idea was challenged by Pierre Fauchard. We will return to him. We now hop back to around 4500 BC and the Slovenian town of Loka. Researchers recently confirmed that a find made here in 1911 contained a beeswax filling. The filling was in a canine tooth of a man in his mid-twenties. The wax covered sensitive dentin exposed by a vertical crack in the tooth. As early as 3000 BC, the ancient Egyptians had dentists. The so-called Edwin Smith papyrus tells of the treatment of several oral ailments. And during the Second Dynasty, Hesira was named as the greatest of those who deal with teeth and of physicians. Egyptian skulls as early as 2900 BC have small holes drilled into jaws, probably to drain abscesses. Egyptian dentists would fix teeth in place with gold wire. They developed early recipes for toothpaste, which crushed burned ox's hooves, eggshells and myrrh, and even used opium as pain relief. However, they also believed that touching an aching tooth with a dead mouse might cure pain. Some evidence for ancient dentistry is indirect. Around 1800 BC, the Code of King Hammurabi states that bad physicians and dentists might be punished by having a hand removed. In Italy, in the 8th century BC, before Rome really started roaming, the Etruscans were flourishing. This fascinating Iron Age culture developed false teeth using human or animal teeth held together with gold bands, and similar appliances held loose teeth in place. As early as the 5th century BC in ancient Greece, Hippocrates himself wrote about the treatment of decaying teeth and gum disease. Greek physicians also extracted teeth and used wire to stabilize teeth. In the early 1st century AD, Rome gained its first emperors. And it is around this time that the Roman physician Celsus was writing. He was the first to describe a lead filling in a cavity. But this was only to stabilize fragmented teeth for extraction. Around 15 AD, a Greek physician working in Rome, Archigenes, 
suggested drilling out tooth decay and stuffing it with roasted earthworms and the crushed eggs of spiders. The Romans gave dentistry its patron saint, Apollonia. In AD 249, she was martyred in Alexandria. All of her teeth were extracted forcibly. This reliquary from Portugal supposedly contains one of those teeth. What of the Saxons and Vikings of the latter first millennium AD in Northern Europe? Well, contrary to popular image, they tended to have really good teeth. This is due to a relative lack of sugar in their diets. Though a Viking's skull found in 2009 in Dorset had grooves filed into his two front teeth, probably to add to the ferocity of his appearance. Around the same time in China, during the Tang Dynasty, they developed probably the first toothbrushes using hog bristles. And in 1223, Japanese Zen master Dogen recorded that he saw monks in China cleaning their teeth with brushes made of horsetail hair. These were attached to an oxbone handle, and it would be centuries, 1690, before Anthony Wood would write of buying a toothbrush in Europe. In the intervening years, during the early Middle Ages in Europe, sciences such as medicine, surgery and dentistry were usually practiced by monks. However, a series of papal edicts in the 12th century expressly prohibited monks from performing any form of surgery. And so, dental care was no longer the purview of educated monks, but rather their less educated assistants, the people who shaved the monks' heads. Barber surgeons were let loose on the public, performing extractions, just at the time when sugar was becoming more and more popular in Europe. The great medieval surgeon Abu al-Qasim al-Zahwari inspired European surgeons and by the 14th century people such as Guy de Chirliac invented the dental pelican. Resembling the beaks of a pelican, a similar tool is still used by dentists today for extractions. Dental care at this time depended very much on one's status in society. Barber surgeons continued to practice amongst the lower classes, though tried to stick to extractions and attempts at pain relief. By the 16th century, dental care had changed little. A Tudor dentist would be a painful experience. For the Tudor dentist, boiled frogs were a staple, and foul concoctions would be applied to rotten teeth to encourage them to fall out. There was some attempt to clean teeth, Frayed twigs would be rubbed on teeth with a paste made from rose water, lavender, and cuttlefish. And the year 1530 saw the publication of the first textbook on dentistry in Germany. And at the end of the Tudor period, Shakespeare makes casual reference to cleaning teeth in a play. But barber surgeons continued to ply their trade. If not a barber surgeon, then maybe a juggler followed by a tooth drawer to thrill the crowd. The 17th century saw French physician Pierre Fauchard lay the foundations of modern dentistry. He dismissed concepts such as the toothworm and published a book, The Surgeon Dentist. One concession to former ways was the use of urine as a mouthwash. But among his many developments were the cleaning, separation, removal of caries, cauterizing, filling, straightening, and strengthening of teeth, and the statement that sugar caused decay. The first dental textbook written in English was Operator for the Teeth by Charles Allen in 1685. And in the 1700s, in Georgian England, dentistry was finding its feet as a profession. There were many developments, though some practices did continue, including, yes, the use of urine as a mouthwash. One new practice was the use of gunpowder to clean teeth, though I can only imagine that smoking at the same time would have been ill-advised. They also made use of red-hot wires to cauterize patients' nerve endings. Fillings were an exciting development, though your filling choice lay with either poisonous lead or that neolithic solution, beeswax. The Georgians also developed porcelain fillings, though unfortunately the lovely white filling would tend to kill the tooth around it. 
If a tooth had to be pulled, a replacement carved from ivory or walrus tusk was always a possibility. Now, many people seem to think that George Washington had false teeth made from wood. This isn't true. They were actually made from his own teeth, cow's teeth, and hippopotamus ivory. Unfortunately, they were set in a metal mouthpiece with springs, which fit poorly and distorted the shape of his mouth. In the late 1700s, English prisoner William Addis is thought to have developed the first mass-produced toothbrush. In his cell, he was unhappy with simply rubbing a rag on his teeth. He saved a small bone from a prison meal, obtained bristles from guards, drilled holes in the bone, glued them together, and voila, a toothbrush. After his release, Addis became very wealthy. Through the 1800s, the first dental colleges were opening, but with the industry of oral health came a requirement for raw materials, for prosthesis. Before porcelain teeth for dentures were perfected, they were usually teeth pulled from the mouths of dead soldiers, often soldiers who fought in the American Civil War. They were used domestically and shipped across the world by the barrel load. The 19th century also saw the development of toothpastes in jars. And in 1892, Dr. Washington Sheffield of Connecticut was the first to put toothpaste into a collapsible tube. No longer were urine-based pastes the only option. And so the world of oral health and dentistry as we know it today began to take shape at the beginning of the 20th century. This story sounds like progress. Their recent research shows that over the past 10,000 years, our narrowing diets and pursuit of oral health have actually reduced the spectrum of bacteria in our mouths, and surprisingly contributed to chronic diseases. Despite that, our summary of the archaeology of dentists has certainly lended me a fresh perspective. My dentist is well trained. They work in a clean, hygienic environment. Heck, I can brush my teeth with toothpaste. I don't have to rely on stale urine. And so, yes, I do feel a little better. But I don't think I'll ever enjoy going to the dentist. <laughs>